Let's continue our discussion of applications of definite integrals, specifically finding the volumes of solids using cross sections where the cross sections look like washers. Consider the region R bounded by the graphs of y equals 2 times the square root of x, x equals 1, and the x-axis. Suppose this region R is revolved around the line y equals negative 1. We want to find the volume of the resulting solid. Here's a graph of our region. I'll call it R. Here's our axis of revolution, y equals negative 1. We'll see that we'll get washers because this line segment that lies on the x-axis will sweep out a part right here. That's going to be the whole of the solid. And then as I consider different points along the curve, y equals 2 times the square root of x, I see that as I get closer to x equals 1, I'm going to get a solid that looks like that. We're going to take cross sections that are perpendicular to the axis of revolution. We'll partition the interval from 0 to 1 along the x-axis. So we have the partition x, e, x sub 0, x sub 1, uh, up through x sub k, and x sub n. Okay. And ultimately, I want to find what happens when this kth rectangle is revolved around the line y equals negative 1 in order to find the volume of the kth slice. So let's consider what happens as this rectangle is revolved around y equals negative 1. I'm going to get that this part along the x-axis forms the whole of the washer. The top curve, y equals 2 times the square root of x, will form the outer edge of the washer. And there we see our washer. Recalling that when we calculate the cross-sectional area of our washer, we have an outer radius, which I denote big R sub O, which is going to be the curve 2 times the square root of, of x sub k minus a negative 1, because we always want to take top minus bottom. And this is y sub k minus y equals negative 1. Our inner radius comes from the x-axis, so r sub i will be y equals 0 minus our axis of revolution, y equals negative 1, to get a positive 1. If I put these pieces together, on the next slide, I've got those same calculations and this diagram here. You can see that the outer radius of the kth washer is 2 times the square root of x sub k plus 1 after simplifying. The inner radius of the kth washer, r sub i sub k, is equal to 1. Therefore, the area of the cross section times the width gives us the volume of the kth washer. So I get delta v sub k is equal to pi times the square of the outer radius minus the square of the inner radius times delta x sub k. When I deposit those pieces in there and I simplify, I get the volume of the kth slice is approximately pi times 4 x sub k plus 4 times the square root of x sub k times delta x sub k. Make sure you're able to do that algebra and to simplify. It's going to make life easier when you come to uh, integrating. To find the volume of the solid, we approximate this using the sum of the volumes of the washers. And so I'm going to sum delta v sub k, k going from 1 to n. So I'm going to get pi times 4 times x sub k plus 4 times the square root of x sub k times delta x sub k, k going from 1 to n. I let the norm of the partition go to 0, and I develop the definite integral from 0 to 1 of pi times 4x plus 4 times the square root of x dx, which we, we can easily integrate. We get pi times 2x squared plus 8 thirds x to the 3 halves power, evaluated at the endpoints from 0 to 1 to get a total volume of 14 pi over 3 cubic units. If we summarize the process when calculating the volume of a solid using cross sections, specifically using uh, discs or washers, keep in mind that the cross sections of the solid are taken perpendicular to the axis of revolution. 
Ultimately, creating and labeling two-dimensional and three-dimensional sketches of the region, the solid and the slices, help to set up the sum and the definite integrals. And you want to make sure that you clearly label those pieces. Next, we want to approximate the volume of the case slice in order to set up the Riemann sum. We take the limit of the Riemann sum as the norm of the partition goes to zero to develop the definite integral. And then that interval that was partitioned at the start of the problem will give us the limits of integration for the definite integral.